Hello and welcome to Judging by the Cover, where we'll be judging Star The Last Jedi Wars by the poster. Although I'll be very surprised if this ends up being the final poster, and slightly less surprised if someone paid money for it as such, because I'm pretty sure I could knock this up with some downloaded fonts and the Photoshop noise function. Still, there is some imagery to analyse. You'll note that the designer has chosen to emphasise the theme of finality, evoked by the subtitle The Last Jedi, by covering the background in a load of full stops. But these full stops by no means herald the end of the Star Wars, as there are also a few colons scattered about. Actually, the one place where there isn't a colon is where one should be, after the title and before the subtitle. I suppose it wasn't practical here, because the creators were so fucking excited about the subtitle that they blurted it out before they'd even finished saying Star Wars. Leaving the white subtitle sandwiched between two angry red masses like the referee at a burn victim sumo wrestling tournament. But let's not be willfully dense. This isn't really a poster, it's merely a glorified announcement of what the subtitle of the next film's going to be. That's made obvious by the constellation just to the right of the title, depicting a stick figure with its arms held wide as if to say, Ta-da! The Last Jedi! But we've still got a logo to analyse, at least. You'll note that the words Star Wars have been decked out somewhat unusually in angry red rather than road sign yellow, which forces us to consider all the things we associate with the colour red. Blood. Danger. Stop signs. Tomatoes. The Kentucky Fried Chicken logo. It lends additional importance to the choice of white for the subtitle, evoking the reassuring white face of Colonel Sanders on the side of the bargain bucket, flanked on all sides by greasy crimson. The S and the T of the Star Wars logo blend together into a single shape, which one might think is purely stylistic, but it may also create a hidden meaning. The shape of the S and the T look a little bit like a side view of a stick figure kneeling on hands and knees. With that in mind, the character to the immediate right must surely represent the head. On its side, the A looks like a giant pair of stylized crocodile jaws connected by a strand of thick saliva. The imagery is stridently vomit-tastic. There's no reason why someone would be on hands and knees with their mouth open towards the floor unless they were having a big old puke or having a serious difference of opinion with a passing worm. The capital R on the right defies interpretation for now. Maybe it's someone trying to distract the first individual by curling up and shoving their head up their ass. With this context, the white subtitle directly underneath this figure now evokes a puddle of spreading puke upon a once pristine curb, in which case the wars part of Star Wars now represents the images within the puke, reflected up at our weak-stomached hero as he stares into his liquefied stomach contents and is confronted by hallucinatory sights conjured by his fevered mind. He sees himself reflected, but not as some broken figure hunched down and vomiting. The R and the S connected together form the image of a figure on their back, curled up with their hands tucked under their chin as they contemplate how pleased they are with themselves and their long box-shaped head. Beside them, the letters W and A, implying that the second figure possesses wealth beyond the dreams of avarice. What happened to that dream, puking man? Why is it now but drifting phantoms in the foaming tide of vomit? Was it taken from you? Or did you deliberately let it go? To, say, the Disney Corporation. The overall message is clear. This film has been completely sicked up, the dream is dead, and we despise ourselves. Colon The Last Jedi. Oh, perhaps I'm reading a bit too much into this, possibly projecting a bit as well, but most of the times I throw up are from overdoing the sherry trifle. So let's move on to the other bit of imagery, which is the word December, hovering in void for god knows what reason. What I do know is that December is the twelfth month, even though the word December literally means tenth month. You can thank Julius and Augustus for that cock-up, but of all the months to shout out, it's interesting they picked the one that means one thing and is another. Perhaps that casts doubt on the whole last thing. Oh, now I am over-reading things. Let's get back to what we know is here, like this constellation here that looks a bit like a slightly tormented duck. A metaphor for buoyancy at the box office? 
Oh, and I found another constellation that makes a pattern just here, but this one's probably more down to subjective interpretation. 